shared mailboxes are a really handy feature of Microsoft 365. But what are shared mailboxes? When do you use them? And how do you set them up? Well, that is the topic for today's video. But before we start, as always, a quick introduction. My name is Jonathan Edwards, and I'm a business IT consultant from Yorkshire in the UK. My IT company helps businesses all over the UK with their IT support and the cyber security. Now do me a quick favor, if you get any value from this video, please subscribe to my channel. It really helps. Now shared mailboxes are a really handy tool in Microsoft 365. All of our clients use shared mailboxes in some capacity. But what is a shared mailbox? Well, the best way for me to explain what a shared mailbox is, is to give you a few examples of when you would use them. Now shared mailboxes are ideal when multiple people need to access a mailbox. So for example, in our business, we've got a shared mailbox called web contact form. So if someone jumps on our website and submits a contact contact form, it will go into the shared mailbox. Now there are multiple people within my business who have access to that shared mailbox so they can all see that email coming in. Another example could be a department in your business. So let's take for example a finance department. You might have a shared mailbox with an email address finance at yourcompany.com. Now in your finance department you might have five or six people and all of these people have access to the finance mailbox. It means there's one place for email to land and all these people have access. So shared mailboxes really are, as the name suggests, a shared mailbox. Now lots of firms use shared mailboxes if someone leaves your business, either permanently or perhaps temporarily, like on maternity leave. The emails that that person is sent might still need to be monitored for a period of time. And that's another great feature of shared mailboxes. They don't have to stay as shared mailboxes. You can convert a shared mailbox back to a regular mailbox and you can convert convert a regular mailbox into a shared mailbox. Now there's another great advantage about shared mailboxes and that is the free. So the Microsoft don't charge you any money for licensing for shared mailboxes. They're just all free of charge and we love free don't we? Now you can access shared mailboxes on your Outlook, on your computer which I'm going to show you in a minute, in Outlook web app and also on the Outlook app on your smartphone. So with all that in mind let's talk about the downsides of shared mailboxes or more more importantly, what a shared mailbox isn't. I was once talking to a guy about shared mailboxes and he said, well, because they're free, can't we just give everyone in our business a shared mailbox and cut down on licensing? Oh my no, God! Well, no, not exactly. You see, to access a shared mailbox, you must be a licensed user of Microsoft 365. So I've got my own mailbox for my own tenant, and that means I can access the shared mailboxes within my organization. If I didn't have a license, I wouldn't be able to access the shared mailboxes. Shared mailboxes don't have a username or a password, so you can't log into them in that way. So now, without further ado, I'm gonna hop onto my computer just behind me and show you a little bit more about shared mailboxes mailboxes. Now you can see on the screen now I've got a test Microsoft 365 tenant. It's just got a couple of users. It's got myself and we've got a person here called Boris Johnson. So Boris has got a Exchange Online Plan 1 license. So he's just got a mailbox. Now assume for example that Boris is either leaving the organization or going on long term sick or something like that. So what I want to do, I don't want to be paying for this license anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Boris's account here. I'm going to click on the mail account and you see an option here. So I'm going to convert this mailbox into a shared mailbox. So simply click on there and click on convert. Then we click on done. Now what I can do to save the cost of the license is I can simply click on here and remove the license from Boris. So I'll click on there and that means Boris no longer has a license. So now Boris is a shared mailbox and we can see if we go back into Boris here, we go into mail, we can't do anything here. So what do we do to administer this shared mailbox? Well, we simply go into the Exchange Online admin portal. So we click on Exchange and that opens up here. Now you can see here, we've got Boris, we've got Jonathan. In the recipient type here, we can see that Jonathan is a user mailbox and Boris is a shared. So we can simply go into here and we can administer this shared mailbox through here. And what we do is we click on the delegation tab. 
Now we can send as Boris. So that's quite a handy thing. If you've got like a, a finance at and you want to send as that person, send as that mailbox, you can just click on edit and you can add what members in there you need to. Or we can give full access to Boris's mailbox to someone else just for viewing purposes. So if I go into here, click on add members, I'll just add myself and click save and click on confirm and then just close out of there. So now that's a shared mailbox and we've given delegated access to Jonathan. If we open up Outlook, this is Jonathan's Outlook, we can see just below Jonathan's mailbox, Boris's has appeared. So that's how shared mailboxes appear in your Outlook. Now, Boris might return to work, you know, he might have some time off sick and he might come back. So what do we do in that situation? We can see here, look, if we highlight Boris, we've got a little tab here and we can just simply convert him back to a regular mailbox. So we click on there and it just converts back to a regular mailbox. It's very, very straightforward. But you'll notice here, look, it says there's a little note underneath. It says a license needs to be assigned and the password needs to be reset. So this is a bit of a gotcha. If you just simply convert it back to a regular mailbox, then there's not going to be a license there. So let's just prove that point here. We'll go into here and um, we'll just rejig it. And we can see, look, Boris has not got a license. So what we need to do is go back and we need to just assign him a license to make that mailbox live again. So that's how you can use shared mailboxes with individuals. Now you can see here again, back in the Exchange and Admin Center, we can click on mailboxes and there's a tab here just to add a shared one. So we can just do that. We don't have to do it with existing people. We could click on there and click on finance, call it finance. Uh, if you can spell finance, uh, select your domain, and you can easily create shared mailboxes that way. So shared mailboxes are a really useful tool. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Shared mailboxes are a really handy tool. I've known so many businesses when they've got a requirement for a shared mailbox to actually license it with an exchange plan one license. And of course that costs them money. But if you know about shared mailboxes, you can save a few pounds. I look forward to seeing you again soon.